Howdy doody, YouTube fans. Um, I just wanted to bring you in on a video. It's been a while since I put up a video, I know. Um, I don't have a garage anymore. I sold my other place. Still looking for a place. Um, it's October 2020. As you all know, with COVID, it's been a challenging year. Anyway, I haven't been able to do too many repair videos to help some of you people out. Oops. But um, I'm just doing some other stuff right now. So I'm going to be posting a few... Uh, a few videos um, today what I'm doing is doing an Alaskan sawmill and I started already but I said you know what I want to I want to share this with you guys um, then the next little project I have let me bring this up to you guys is I believe this is a 20 gallon I believe yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that is a 20 gallon can, I believe. Anyway, the 20 gallon grease cans, you know the ones I'm talking about. It should be 15 inches diameter. Yeah, see? 14 and a half by, I'm sorry. Twenty-six high. Um, gonna convert that into a a fireplace. Yeah, sorry. Let me take that over. That's gonna be a wood stove. Uh, I'm gonna put a door in the front. I'm gonna slice off the dented part, the worst part. I'm gonna put a plate on top. Put my vent out. I'm going to put a baffle, uh, some kind of grate on the bottom, coal, uh, sorry, ash cleaner, and I want a secondary burn vent, probably coming in from the back, slide a vent open with a pipe coming up to just under the baffle before the end of the baffle to uh, energize that fire, give you the second burn, warm up that air and been reading a lot on that and I think that's what I'm going to do today I'm asking um, sawmill so what I did let me put this away I know horrible setup but it is what it is yeah. starting to look like uh, Buckin Buckin's uh, little shop in the back he's cozy he's comfy Got a little heat. I'm gonna put the wood stove in the front. What I'm gonna do is build a fake wall. Open a door and I'll have a door here. But I'm gonna put a st stove pipe out. I'm not putting holes in this yet. I don't want to. Uh, so I'm just gonna go out the door. I'm gonna vent. Come up and vent out the door if you guys get what I mean. When I'm in here, insulate that wall. I don't think I'll be able to be in here in cold, cold days, but eh, 20, 10, 20 below, I think I'll be all right. Those are degrees of Celsius. Um, so now, back to the Alaskan sawmill. Been making some stuff. I'm making a little bench here, and I want to saw some slabs. I'm making my saw horses. Maybe I'll give you a video on that when I'm almost done. Uh, I'm almost there, but it's uh, no nails. Uh, mortise and joint um, and then uh, anyway I want to put a nice little bench there so I can do my work work on my chainsaws and I'm gonna also build a three okay so 272 I'm gonna 372 372 I'm going to build a 61 Husqvarna and convert it into a 7 a 272 right so or 372 can't remember the model number uh, maybe XP. I don't know if XP is doable, but uh, I'm, I'm still doing a lot of research on that. I need. I, I, I'm going to do a little bit of porting and polishing. Go through some port timing with you guys and stuff like that, and show you guys. I don't want to get into it too much. I don't think a hot rod is a good idea for a. Uh, let me set you guys up here. I apologize. I don't think a hot rod is a good 
good idea for a um, for for, for uh, milling. So I'm going to do a lot of milling, uh, timbers and and board. I don't think that hot rods are a good idea. You're going a long time, long stretches, without trying to take too many breaks because you don't want to ruin your finish on the cut. I don't think it's a good idea. Um, but I think a little bit of porting is good. I think that a chainsaw that breeds a little better, performs a little better, and I think it's good for it. It's not bad for it. Now, if you start getting into uh, port timing and really getting aggressive, and uh, the transfers, if you're making the transfers breed really heavy, you can make that thing rev out. And do, you know, anyway, you can get really crazy. Not my aim, not my focus. So, I'm gonna go through this now. All right, let's officially start this. So what I'm doing is, uh, if you guys will probably recognize this, I think it's the Panther, Panther Mill. I think it, it, Panther Two or something like that. It's, it's anyway. I've seen this before. I know it's this. It stayed in my head for a lot of years. I drew it out on a design, and I've had it for years. And then I decided I'm building one, and I believe that's the one. I tried to look for it the other day, and I, I confirmed it. I think I think I'm right. I think this is the Panther, or, or similar. Um, what I'm doing is, as you can see, the bar is going in here. Here's uh, you're gonna have the two bars that sit on the ground. Sorry, that floats on the on the slab. Oops, sorry. So this is going to be where the bars sit and ride. Yeah, where the bars sit and ride on the wood on the surface. This is where the bar chainsaw bar gets pinched. In, uh, in the device. This floats up and down. This tubing floats up and down. I don't know if later I'll put measurements here or whatever. Uh, most of the time you just kind of measure where you're between underneath your, your bars, which are over there. And uh, you move it up and down. There's two of these, one on each side. And like I said, the bars float back and forth. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at this thinking I did it wrong, but, yeah, there's maybe something wrong with that hole. Yep. Sorry. No, my bad. Um, and I'm going to build a twin to this, which I will show you in this video. I'll build a twin to this. I may have to... I'm going to check if that tries to open up or, or turn or twist or whatever. I may put a couple little straps in here to stop that from happening and weld it up. It'll still move. I haven't checked how much travel it gave myself. The tube is 18 inches long, so shouldn't it be 18 inches? Or 20? Oh, I'm sorry, it's 20. So the travel is 20 inches. Travel is this. Oh, I could go a little higher. 13 or 14 inches. I could go 14 inches. Yeah, something like that. So that would be enough, I think. Yeah, where I live, that's plenty of, uh, that's plenty good. So I'm not going more than that. But I'm going to get into the second one. Second one's going to go. All I've done is again, two by one tubing, two by one, one by one tubing, welded here. These are eight inches, I believe, or eight and a half. Eight inches, little flat bore in the bottom, flat bar. That's to pinch the actual chainsaw bar. You can't go too wide with these because you don't want to be pinching the kerf in the bar. You want to be in the center of the bar and not be affecting and you don't want to be on the wheel of the chainsaw you want to be away from that you don't want to pinch those things you'll ruin a bar pretty fast i'm thinking uh, so we'll finish up this one get it welded up all my pieces are over here these are spare to believe all my flat bar pieces these have to be bent 
these will have to be uh, bent and drilled so they pinch the tubing this is why I think this one's off I think this one needs to be over here I, I'm, I just can't remember I'll have to go look at my drawings which I left behind here's the bars that that are gonna sit on the timber one sits like this the other one sits across from it so one on each side and then one up top just to keep the rigidity on everything this is the one you kind of push it sits up here across the two and that's kind of the one you push on it so it sits like this so I think you're gonna get the gif of things here now so that's what you'll see here shortly. I'm just going to get back at it. Got the other one here, right? Um, angle iron. There it is. There's my angle iron that I put in here to make this fit. I wasn't. Gonna, I ordered. I picked this up out of scrap. Some of it. One of the two of the tubings I purchased. The rest I picked out out of the scrap. And. Um, I picked up one by one and two by one. The rest of the pieces are all scrap. I picked it up here and there. And uh, I, I did, wasn't going to order a special tubing to fit that two by one. Um, there probably is other sizes. Maybe you guys have better ideas on that. Uh, but use what you can, as long as it fits in the other one loosely, not too tight. Uh, but anyway, find what you need, what you can, and uh, make it work. So I'm going to get into this video, I'm going to get ready here and bring you guys back when I'm starting to weld the stuff and give you a bit of footage. Thanks. Be right back. I brought you back. There was a mistake. So that hole I was saying there was a mistake. Mistake is not the hole. The mistake is the location of this. The bars on the bottom. Let me get small bars. The bars on the bottom ride here and here now that might seem okay to you guys but it's too it's too far back so I made a mistake on the location and you know I didn't measure that to be totally honest with you I put it there I knew I was you know I was aiming for the middle I didn't put it in the middle it's kind of my fault uh, not kind of it is my fault somebody else here so it's my fault. I need to fix that before I move on to this one. And I went and welded it like a banshee. So <laughs> I got to cut this out uh, and cut it out. Yeah, here. Grind it up, clean it up. Grind this up, clean this up. And then weld it back on. Maybe about an inch over an inch over would be plenty so i'm gonna get to that that's my first task I'm fixing my goof up and uh i think i'm gonna go to the middle of this 12 inches yeah if i move an inch guys i'm moving a six inch imagine that so that's the middle so that's where it's gonna go fixing boo boo I'll bring you back in a second Thank <laughs> you. 
Time to weld. Tack this all up and get the other one tacked all up. Uh, actually, I'm just going to do good big tacks. It's enough for that. It's, you know, let's say one inch tack here and there. It's more than plenty. Trouble, having a lot of trouble with that welder. Get a little bit of porosity. The weld is not consistent. So, I don't know. It's okay, but it's just not, you know, consistent. I'm not a great welder by any means, but I think I'm better than that. But anyway, not getting the penetration though, but I don't want to burn too hot either. So here we go. I'm going to bring you guys in maybe for a better view. Back here, closer. Set you up perfectly here, speed you up, and then uh, show you what I'm doing here.
Pioneer P38 in pretty darn good condition. Just did a carb kit on it. It's not a hot rod like yours. Like Iron Horse built for you. But she's a beaut. I still, I, I'm fighting with that recoil. I keep coiling it. I need a new recoil spring. I don't have one. Uh, what a great saw. I've been using it to saw mill. And uh, guys, I mill timber with that bracket. So that's the, uh, that's the bracket I want to show you guys. So this is the tough. King tough turf tough turf. Uh, I just want to add here this is what that I meant I this um, when I say hot rod, I mean a highly customized this is, this is really machine for competition with a big pipe and, and those things you see in the uh, lumberjack competitions. I don't mean a saw like uh, Iron Horse sometimes builds for bucking or other customers or. A Walker brother, uh, the Walker saws, uh, Donnie or John, John Walker. Uh, those are improved saws. In my opinion, those are improved saws for better performance and they will last just as long. That's what I meant. Sorry. Those pioneers were something else. This is almost my age. And uh, I'll tell you, I love this saw. I really do. Like I said, I'm building a Husqvarna 61 into a 272 or 372. I may have that wrong, but you know, a 71 cc saw um, versus a 61 cc saw. Uh, um, apparently, it's doable. I watched it. Uh, don't think I'm going to hot rod it for the same reason that I think it's no good for the saws. So let me show you how it ripped through the timber. But um, this was there. That's the cuts. Um, <clears throat> I got a butt ends, but uh, look, there's some. There's some that might be a 35 degree, and yeah, this might be a 35 degree cut, uh, filing. This is probably 10 degree. Yeah, it is. Look at that. If you don't stop, like I was telling you, if you don't hot rod your chainsaw, your chainsaw can go through the entire cut without stopping and overheating. So, uh, that's my bench, guys. Pretty cool. Um, I think, uh, I think um, hot rodding a saw is not a good idea. So anyway, I'm babbling on and I'm breaking in this video. I'm going to tag uh, Billy Ray. If you guys don't know who Billy Ray is, he's got his own YouTube channel. He's got 200,000 subscribers. Um, you need to see him. If you guys ever want to learn how to fell or cut wood or uh, listen, that guy taught me more things. File, chain, grind chain. He does it all. Cli he climbs too and everything. He, he does every tree work. And he's an amazing fellow. He's actually got a good, he's a good hearted individual. He's an amazing fellow. You need to go see him. I'm going to tag him in my, uh, in my uh, comments. So he sees this saw. Uh, uh, or I'm going to go to his, one of his videos and tag him and tell him he needs to come see this saw. Uh, I think he'd like it. You almost ended up with it, Billy. Billy Ray. Uh, Buckin, so Buckin Billy Ray is his name. Um, he's, uh, you he almost ended up with it. I almost gave up on this saw. And I said, uh, don't have the right parts. It's really hard, really hard to find parts for these saws. Buckin, oh no. Uh, it's not easy. Um, but I love it too much. It is just a beautiful saw. Uh, McCulloch's and uh, Pioneers. Pioneers had with those reed valves. They just had, they had something else going on. They did. Uh, stock saw, they were amazing. So, ahead of their time. Um, so, I'm gonna, anyway, I'm gonna cut this short because I'm chewing up my video. 
I'm going to finish up this Alaska. I'm going to speed you up through the last section, and I'm probably going to go run a test on it. I'm going to use my timber to make the first cut because it is just easier. You put two by six on top, slide it through a two by six, make the first cut. It's great for making timbers. It's not good for making slab. So I wanted an Alaskan mill to make slab. So I'm going to make some slab. Be right back, folks.
some, but not too much. Okay. Get attacked. That smoke is brutal. I am going to attack the other end.
using a metal uh, MIG, metal inert gas. I rather use flux core for what I do. I think flux core. I think flux core would be better. Um, just because wind and uh, I can use it inside outside, uh, and I don't always have to clean pieces. MIG is really good for clean pieces, controlled environments, and uh, so I think flux core would be a better deal for me. Two years I've been trying to use up that gas so I can turn back in the tank in and get myself some flux core reels. There's a lot of gas in there for my little bit of use. Anyway, I'll finish her up. There we go. I got it on the right side. I just gotta bend those pieces. So I gotta. Okay. So I'm gonna bend. I gotta drill a hole. And I gotta bend these down. So that they clamp down. Yeah. They clamp down the tubing. So I don't know. I'm about 45, I guess. Just gotta figure out where I gotta put my. Bends. Gotta make sure. I think I'm gonna. My, and my hole in my bed. Putting a hole and then the bend just on the outside of the hole. Good morning, YouTubers. Um, we, I didn't get to finish up this video like I would have liked. Uh, camera battery died out and my other camera is having issues. Um, sorry about that. Um, i just show you what I finished up. And I couldn't take a, I took a video of my phone with the timber cuff uh, milling uh, bracket. So you're chainsaw bar if you, you guys have seen these if, you, if you're looking at this video the chainsaw bar slides in here and you slide this on a two by six um and it basically slides down you screw the two by six at a level you get it all marked up where you want it and you cut you cut a sliver off it's great for making beams timber and it's what it's designed for when it came to making planks it wasn't good which is why it brought me to making this so i'll tell you how i finished off i bent these brackets using one of my uh one of these arms i pinched it in here where i wanted it about an inch uh, this is two inches approximately and i bent them all with a just a hammer and hammered them put them down on the floor and hammered them down and uh, got all my fasteners in gonna change these maybe but uh, anyway um, it works pretty well uh, gonna have to get much longer bar that's as long as I can go with my 20 inch bar 
So I'm going to get myself a 28 inch bar with my Husqvarna. Uh, so I'm, I got a 61 Husqvarna that I'm rebuilding into a 72cc, uh, two, basically a 272. Um, I think I told you guys that. I'm going to get a 28 inch bar that should give me about 8 inches extra, which is more than plenty up here. We don't get into big, big, huge timbers. If I needed a bigger bar, I could go up to a 30, I guess, or 32 would be this will do a 32 inch bar the way it's set up it, it's uh, it's only a 30 inch bar but the way it's set up you can't use the whole bar you gotta kind of stay off three four inches off the top you gotta be about a, an inch or two off the bottom you're already at 26 28 inches with a 30 or 32 so um, my review on this is it worked really good uh, would have needed a better milling chain or a skip tooth to be perfect it is slow compared to that this took me same tree mind you cut less i was cutting about eight inches versus almost 12 inches that took me four minutes you'll see on a video i might throw that clip that was a four minute clip this took me at least 15 minutes uh, 15 16 not hard but it, but it but a lot clean very clean cut and when it was finished just a little bit of fuzz where this leaves more milling marks it leaves uh, the chain saw mark um, I always just kind of pass a sander over my stuff uh, if I need it rough I just still pass a sander on it uh, if I leave it rough, I mean, but uh, it works out pretty good. Anyway, uh, you can start down at the bottom is about one inch, about an inch cutting depth. No, it's an inch and a half. My start, and I could go all the way down to probably, I'm going to say, I cut a five inch piece and I still have that. I didn't change it. I cut a five inch piece and I still have all this left. So say another eight, 12, 13 inches easy, I could slab out. It would take a long time. You need a good, strong chainsaw. Um, if you're gonna cut a lot of mass, I'm using my old Pioneer, which is a 58 cc, I believe. A Pioneer does, they do tug pretty good. They're, they're a good saw, uh, but I'd say you need a 60, uh, 50 plus guaranteed cc to get through wood um, i like it i'm going to enjoy it i'm going to use it for certain projects i have make some board planks and stuff like that. wider board um, i'm going to make it myself a shelf here two big planks here so that'll be part of my i'm making sawhorses today that's what i'm doing um, uh, it'll work out well thank you very much for watching enjoy, i hope you enjoyed hope it was uh, helpful for you uh, if you want more details, I could give you more details in another video. If you just ask for it, and I will do my best. I'll go into the greater detail. Uh, it's about a foot apart here. These are about six inches high. These are two by one, one by ones, all one by one. This is inch and a quarter, inch and a half flat bar, one eight little more than eight, one eight thick i can't remember the gauge of that. it's a little more no that's one eight thick. that's one eight um three eighth bolts i used five eight bolts for that it holds it plenty tight you just give it a little just a snug and it works nine inches and something here well 12 minus that 10 inches it, it's a little less than that it, it, i ended up see if you see this is this is 12 inches so I ended up a little bit inside. I wanted to, I did that by purpose because I wanted that overhang. I wanted this overhang. Anyway, I'll let you go with that. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. And good luck to you guys.